Welcome in this video. In the last video, I left with the checkout form being created and well, telling you, you might try implementing Stripe on your own. Now, no matter if you were successful or not, let's do it together now. I'm back on the Stripe page here in the documentation, but I also signed into Stripe on the new, another tab. So make an account, create an account and sign in. Make sure to leave your environment up here being set to test, which basically allows you to crude, well, send test charges, which won't cost you anything. Of course, you don't earn anything too. And which also allows you to use any credit card numbers as long as they have the right amount of digits, but you don't have to use real credit card data. And that of course is great for testing. So as you see, I already did some test charges here, but overall, this is a pretty new account. And one important thing is on this dashboard here, here uh, on this Stripe backend, what you want to have a look at is if you go to your account and then to account settings, you will have this API's key link here. And here you will see the test keys, which you will need. You also see the live keys, which are blurred out on my machine here. But the test keys are the ones you will need to place in your JavaScript code later on. The publishable key, which you will need in your JavaScript code in order to, well, connect to Stripe there. But since everyone will be able to see this key, well, this of course is not secret. This is okay if other people see that key. This test secret key, which also is blurred out here, however, has to be secret and will later on be stored in your PHP code, which runs on the server and therefore is not visible to everyone. This will be the key which finally is required to make a charge and to make sure that, well, not anyone having access to this key is able to charge, well, any credit card he found or anything like that. So you will work with those two keys and I will come back to that when we use them just so that you know where to find them. It's in the your account settings here. So this is the account, but back to the documentation for now. As I already explained in the last video, we have this two-step process where we first verify the credit card data and so on with JavaScript. And we will send the request to the Stripe servers and the Stripe servers will hopefully tell us that the data is valid and it will give us back a token, which we then send to our own Laravel PHP code. And with that token, we can then issue a charge or make a charge but we do that from our PHP code, not through JavaScript, because with the PHP code, we will send this secret key and basically then tell Stripe to not only verify the data, but use that verified data to make a charge. So I hope that is clear how all of that works together. Now, in order to do all that, I navigated to the API libraries um, well, page here on the Stripe documentation. And here we'll find how to implement it on, well, all the different server-side languages, including PHP. Well, as you see, it's all about adding this single line to Composer. So let's do this. I will copy it, head over to my project, and then in the composer.json file here, in the require field here, where I basically set up which packages I require or which I need in this application, I will add the line I just copied. So I need the Stripe SDK basically. Now with that, I not only need to, well, add it here, I also need to install it. So I will open up my terminal, navigate into this folder, which this automatically did. And then I will run composer update or composer install, which will basically just update this version here. Now this will take a couple of seconds. and I'll be back once this is finished. So it's almost finished here, or now it is finished. Don't worry if like here it updated a couple of packages. That's simply just because I used the update command, but it should still work. It also installed the Stripe package though, which of course is what I needed. So with that, I have access to the Stripe SDK on the PHP code, but I also, as I just said before, need to implement the Stripe JavaScript package in order to have this first step of validating the user input. So let's go back to the Stripe documentation and click on Stripe JS, which is this front end related package you will need. 
Now here you will see that we have to include it like this. So I will copy this import here, which leads to a CDN. You don't have to download anything. Then head over to your code and then you check out the blade.php file. At the very bottom, after closing the content section, and I will close my terminal here since I don't need it anymore. After this section here, I want to enter a new section, scripts, and I'll close it here too. Now, if we have a look at our layout, our master layout, you see we have this scripts hook here, which allows me to add some script imports to individual pages, like the checkout page here. So inside of this scripts section here, I will well throw in this import I just grabbed from the Stripe documentation. And with that, I have access to the Stripe SDK. Now, of course, that isn't enough. I need to write my own JavaScript code to now basically fetch all the information from this form and then send it to the Stripe server to validate it. Now, in order to do this, I will go into my public source folder, create a new folder here, which I named JS for JavaScript and add a new JavaScript file and I will name it checkout.js. And the name of course is up to you. Back in the checkout blade.php file, after importing the Stripe SDK, the JavaScript SDK here, I will just add a new import. Here I will use my templating syntax then the URL helper and the to method to get a clear and correct link or URL to my JavaScript files, no matter on which page of my application I am. So here I want to enter source slash JS dot checkout JS, because keep in mind, this path here has always to be seen from the public folder, not from this resources folder, because in the end on the server, your view will be rendered in the public folder kind of. So therefore this, the, the path is source chairs, checkout chairs. Now, of course, I'm not doing anything in the file yet, but I will so shortly. So what do I want to do here? Well, let's go back to the Stripe documentation. It tells me that I first should set my publishable key, this one here. Now I need to set this key. And by the way, the documentation is really clever. This key here should all ready be the correct key here. So as it says here, we pre-filled this example with your test API key. So therefore this is already the line you may copy if you are logged in. So I will copy the line and throw it into my checkout file. Now, why do I need this key? Well, in order to kind of identify with the Stripe servers, send the credit card data, and then they will give me a token, which takes this key into account, so kind of an encrypted version of that, if you want to put it like this. And later I can use this token on my PHP code or in my PHP code to make a charge. There I will connect it with my secret key and with this combination of token based on this public key and my secret key, well, Stripe can be sure that nothing fishy is going on that, and that instead the page and the user who validated the credit card info is also the one making the purchase and that we're not well kind of using some cross site scripting attacks or anything like that. So therefore we need this publishable key to make this transaction secure. Next, as the documentation tells me, I need to collect the card details here. Now, as you can see, they use jQuery here and I will just copy this code and also throw it into my file here. Now that wouldn't work like this though, because right now this would get executed immediately as soon as this file is loaded, which of course happens as soon as this page here is loaded. And that is not really the behavior I want because if I would do it like that, well, then it would be submitted before the user hit submit before the user actually clicked this button. Therefore, I will go back to the checkout page and I want to add an event listener listening to, the, listening to this form submission. And then as I said in the last video, stop the form submission, instead execute this code, make sure that this code is well run, that the credit card number is validated, and once we got an answer from Stripe, then I want to continue with the form submission. So that's how the process should look like. And that's how I will set it up here.
But first, let's make sure that all these IDs here or all these values we use here are actually correct. And I can already tell you they are not because in the Stripe.js example here, we're using class names. However, in my view, I'm using IDs, not class names. So I need to adjust that and I will adjust it right now. So the number actually has an ID of card number, but I need a hashtag since it is an ID. The CVC code is also hashtag card CVC. Expiration month is hashtag card expiry month. And again, just check out the ID names being set up here in this form, right? Just using these. The expiration year is hashtag card expiry year. So, well, using IDs all over the place. And the address here is not something we need. I won't submit this here, but I will submit the name, let's say. So dollar sign, hashtag, whoops, should be a string though, hashtag card name. Of course, also use the val function here, which is a jQuery function, right? To get the value of this input field. So that's the information I will submit. And then this will be the callback being executed once we get back, well, an answer from Stripe. Now we don't have that callback yet and we don't have this form submission interruption I was talking of earlier. So let's implement both. I will create a new variable, which I will call Dorosime form, but name of course up to you. And I will, sub, or, well, I will select it by ID, the checkout form. Keep in mind that's the ID I assign to the overall form here, the form tag. So with that I'm fetching this overall form. And then I want to use my form here, use the submit method, which is just a jQuery method, right? This is just a shortcut to create a on submit event listener. And with the submit method, I will pass a callback or an anonymous function, which should get executed whenever the user submits the form where I will pass the form submission event. And now inside here is the place where I want to execute this Stripe code. Now, I also want to show potential errors happening throughout this submission process. Therefore, I will go back to my shopping cart or to my checkout view here. And right before opening the form, after the total, I will add a div which I will give an ID of, let's say, charge error, which should get a class of alert, alert danger. These are just bootstrap classes. I will also add a conditional class using template expression here to check if my session does not have an error, well, object or field inside it. So if we don't have an error, then I want to add the hidden class, which basically, well, will hide this div. Otherwise, I want to show it and I won't attach an extra class. So all I'm doing here is just hide the div if I don't have an error, because then I, of course, don't want to show this error page here. Now then, if we do have an error, then I want to output it here. So session get error, like this. Now, I could show errors here, but I also need to set them, right? So back in the checkout.js file, when submitting the form, I want to take my charge error. Remember, I assigned this as an ID here, charge error. So I'm selecting it with jQuery here and I want to add a class hidden. So I'm hiding all errors whenever I submit the form, because at this point there can't be any errors. So it's certainly right to attach this class. Then I want to find the button which submits the form and I want to set it to being disabled. And I'm just using jQuery code here. If you're not familiar with that, definitely have a look at some jQuery tutorials. I want to disable the button because I don't want the user to hit on it or to click it multiple times because I'm already sending the data to Stripe and I don't want to send it over and over again that could mess up the application. Therefore, I'm disabling the button for the time it needs for Stripe to answer. After all that, I will just return false. And this is important because this means 
Once all this code here is executed, so we send the request to Stripe and we're waiting for the response, in which case we would execute the Stripe response handler, which we have yet to create. Well, we execute all that code, but then we return false, which means, okay, we're done. Don't continue with the form submission, because remember, we're in the form submit event handler here. That is important because otherwise, now we would send a post request to Laravel and I don't want to do that right now because right now I haven't validated the form yet. Remember, this is an asynchronous task here. The response might not be there yet. So I don't want to continue with the charge because I haven't validated the credit card information yet. That is why I return false and just tell my code, the browser, okay, wait a second, don't continue with form submission. I'm well, we don't need to do anything here. Well, the place where we do need to do things is of course the Stripe response handler. So I will create it, raw Stripe response handler. And this handler actually takes two arguments, a status and a response. Now in here, I will check if we do have a response error. So if something went wrong, and if that is the case, I want to show the error, of course. So then I would, well, basically select my charge error, like up here, the div I want to show any errors in. I would remove the hidden class because now I want to show it. And instead, I would, well, set the text to show my response error message. This is an error message being sent by Stripe, by the way, this year. So now I would display my error and then I also want to enable the button, of course, because now I'm done. I got my response. I know that, well, we got an error, but I want to enable the user to submit the form again to fix this error, right? So therefore I'm enabling the button again. If we don't have an error though, well then I will be in the else block here and I know that the well, validation was successful and that Stripe will have sent me a token. So I will store this token in a token variable and I can access it on the ID field and the response. How do I know that? Well, if you have a look at the documentation, you see this example response handler down here and this is what they're doing here. They are getting the token here from response ID. Now I also need to append this token to my form and I will just copy their code here, copy both lines actually, to make sure that this new token is now added to the, well, HTML code to the DOM as a hidden input field. So this checkout play PHP file will receive another hidden input field at the end of the form, which holds this Stripe token, which again, we need to send to the server, to Laravel, to there, send it to Stripe again when we actually make the charge. We didn't charge yet, we just validated the data. So therefore now I'm sending this token or I'm pending it so that I can send it. And with this last line here, I'm actually submitting the form. So with get zero, I basically just get the form and with submit, I will submit it because now I do want to send the post request. Now I don't want to capture it with JavaScript. Now I basically let the request continue before I stopped it and I threw in JavaScript and Stripe to validate the data. Now that the data is validated, I want to continue and submit the form to the server, which I do with this line. With that, all these Stripe front end related things are set up and we should be able to work with this. However, we just saw this should be slash, uh, hashtag charge error here, as should it be down here. Little mistake on my side because I'm selecting by ID here. So with that, I'm ready to submit the data to Stripe to validate it. But of course, I don't have any code in place to actually, well, send it on the PHP side and make the charge. So this will be what we're working on next.